Now, I'm not going to leave you with no hope and no plan. That's not my job. For years, for a quarter of a century, I've been focusing on another aspect of GMOs, the health dangers, and the strategy was to redirect people's purchasing power so that it would influence the food industry, so that the food industry would kick GMOs out, even if the long stream of presidents from Reagan on were pro-GMO. And it's worked. 46% of Americans are seeking non-GMO food, and food companies are kicking them out. But at this time, because of the inexpensive nature and still highly risky nature of gene editing, we're in an entirely new world. You can go on Amazon and buy a do-it-yourself gene editing kit for $159 before Christmas and $161 after, so you missed out on saving $2 to create new organisms that have never been part of the history of evolution. And if you happen to flush them down the toilet, you've just done an environmental release. Now, when we show this three-minute film, some people are wondering, well, how bad can it be? What could possibly go wrong? So a large portion of this lecture is that, answering that question. And I'm going to give you some good news and some inspiration at the end, so don't leave in the middle. You'll be very depressed. <laughs> so I want to start with fish. There are almost 40 fish in the pipeline, maybe many more by now. And already there's genetically engineered salmon being sold and consumed in Canada, particularly in restaurants and by catering organizations. And when they did research on this fish, they found that the allergic responses, according to the reaction in the blood, was 20 to 52% higher but they considered it not statistically significant because they only used six fish. In other words, they designed the study so that even a huge increase in allergenicity could be avoided, knowing that they were about to be feeding it to millions of people. This was in criminal in my mind. They also found that there was higher levels of IGF-1. In, in one case, 40% higher. That is a cancer promoter. And they used a, a method of detecting growth hormones that was so bad, they couldn't detect the hormones. And rather than improve their detection, they said, there's no problem. They didn't find a difference between the experiment and the control because they didn't find it anywhere. This is not science. This is corporate science. This is tobacco science. Now, what, are, what is the genetically engineered salmon? Well, it's designed to produce a growth hormone nonstop, and so it grows fast. A similar salmon was studied in Canada by scientists, and they put these genetically engineered fast-growing salmon in tanks, either just with the GMOs or with the non-GMO salmon, and when they fed them enough food, it was fine. When they lowered the amount of food, the frankenfish freaked. Why? Because they're fast-growing, and they're voracious. They're always hungry. So they became cannibals and started killing and eating their competition, whether they were genetically engineered or not. And it, in each tank, there was either a population crash or a complete extinction. They also would travel to different parts of this fake underground ecosystem, hunting out other fish whereas the natural salmon wouldn't go there. So they became highly aggressive, cannibalistic. And if you imagine what could happen uh, in the oceans, it's tragic. But here's another scenario of a Japanese type fish called a madaka. They genetically engineered it. And there's a mating advantage because it's a little larger. The females go after the larger males. and their offspring only have a 70% survival rate instead of 100%. So in Purdue University, they put 60 fish in a computer model of a population of 60,000, programmed the natural behaviors of the GMOs, and found that in 40 generations, there were no more fish. These 
For whatever reason, these particular characteristics, higher mating advantage, lower survival, resulted in extinction. Now, these are the, we know that in North Atlantic alone, more than two million salmon escape the fish farms. Now, the genetically engineered salmon are not supposed to be grown in fish farms. They're supposed to be grown in inland tanks. However, there's now interest from all over the world, and we know that the monitoring and guarding the movement of GMOs has been poorly, poorly supervised, and they've had things stolen out of uh, test plots and things diverted and sold accidentally. So imagine what would happen in the world in the oceans if we have these genetically engineered salmon. Either you have these adolescent gangs of ravenous fish attacking species or wiping out the salmon uh, population or we don't know. So this is an example of something that could be catastrophic to the ecosystem based on a single pair of fish released outdoors if it comes to it.